Good morning, everyone. We thank God for you once again joining us. Uh, this is Bishop Melvin E. Blake of In His Image Christian Ministries, Sunday the 11th of 2018, February. We are so blessed to have you once again to join us. We have been, uh, again, seeking the Lord for what we should be doing as a church ministry as we move into the forefront of what he's called us to do. Today, the Lord has given me a word that deals with uh, our faith and the motivation behind our faith. So many times we deal with God from a perspective of things that we want rather than from the perspective of who God is. God promises us these things in Deuteronomy and, and Matthew, the sixth chapter. But for some reason, we get entangled in the desires that we want rather than the desire for him. The Bible tells us that we are supposed to worship him in truth and in spirit. So come join us today as we take an example out of the Bible uh, as it relates to Paul. Paul speaks about, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we must do. We've got to study. We've got to be a fellowship. We've got to attend uh, services. We've got to uh, do everything we can to prepare ourselves for this outpouring of, of the Holy Spirit through us, which has been mandated by God. Come and join us today. Again, we're speaking today from the perspective of change your motivation, change your faith. God bless you. Go to the second book of Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We'll just lift up a couple of verses of that scripture. When you get there, please say amen. First of all, look to your neighbor, tell him stay on the bus. Verse 1, the first verse reads, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened. Not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon. That morality might be swallowed up for life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who has also given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Amen. I want to talk to you for a little while. About a change of motivation, producing a change in your faith. For some foolish reason, I thought that that teaching about, man, this is important, was the end. But God has so showed me that there is so much more to this positioning. The Bible tells us in John, amen, the 15th chapter, that he purges, amen, from us that our fruit might remain. Uh, this is an important time. I was sharing that um, uh, we, we have to uh, begin to embrace who we are in the body of Christ. I mean, from from a real place and that place starts internally and we can't get the picture until we uh, look at the true picture of who we are. Uh, that said, it's, it's coming upon us that we really begin to uh, do something we should have been done and that's really pay attention to who we are coming to the place where we can realize who God is. Let me just say this. You know, we we want to worship God, but unfortunately, I'm trying to get through here. There's a lot of material, but um, God does not wait for his worship. Let me say that again. We God does not wait for his worship. He he does not have to get into a posture to deserve it. Amen. 
too often we wait to worship until we get what we want. And and in more ways than none, that disqualifies your worship. Because we should worship God because he is. And And this conundrum I find in the church is that so many times worship is only released in some form of praise when we are happy with some result. And, and what God is always telling us is that uh, I'm God and I'm true. And, and that that should really be enough. Somebody needs to say amen. So as God had me looking at this word, he carried me to uh, this understanding that, that logos, L-O-G-O-S, is a totally motivated and inspired word of God. Somebody say amen. It's the logos. We talk about rhema word. Mm, everybody wants a rhema word. Amen. But do you understand what a rhema word is? A rhema word produces. Somebody say amen. And when it produces, it brings forth change. The rhema word is a spoken word that results in the quickening of the Holy Spirit. It motivate is it mot its motivation is attended by, watch this now the authentic application to a current situation. So we, we talk about dealing with and going through and things of this nature, which I'm not fond of. You know that, right? Somebody say amen. Because I believe that it's come to a place where we got to turn the channel. If you believe in God and who he is, one of these days you should, should stop just going through. Somebody say amen. If you believe that it's God, why are you always going through? It's like God always got to restart with you to become God. I'm, I'm trying to keep it real, y'all, because I know there are some folk that know God is God and God all by himself, and times have showed you that he does not change. And, and, and again, let me say this. He don't wait for you. He going to be God whether you come along or not because mm -hmm. he don't have to prove nothing to nobody. It's a eureka moment, you know, that aha moment in life. That's what a rhema word does. It sits on your situation and brings healing, deliverance, peace, joy, strength, and understanding to your situation. And too often we think we're getting a rhema word and we're blocking it because of our motivation. We want something from God, but we uh, refuse to allow God to do what he wants to do. I'm so grateful because... A lot of things that folk deal with at the church, I ain't had to deal with it. See, I was that bad, and I can tell y'all that. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't fall out of heaven. Somebody say amen. Mm -hmm. Some of us fell out of heaven, we think. Mm. Mm -hmm. I want to keep it real with you today because look, look, look at this thing, man. You, I, I just wish we could, I pray, I know it's going to happen because uh, what God says happens. That's my commitment to waiting, being patient. But when you look at your lives, let me, let me help you for a minute. Yeah, you go about doing your thing in life, but there's this, this unction in, inside of you that, that makes you want to create. Folk want to work on their own. People want to do their own thing. Now, this is different than what some folk may experience because it's a part of your DNA. Let me let that stay there for a minute. It's a part of who you are. Now, why is that important? It's because God has gathered a set of creators to establish yet again in the earth who he is. But if we don't pay attention to that, we miss our calling. We're looking at this thing from a perspective of self-pity, of self-centeredness, instead of looking at it from a God perspective. It's everything God wants after I get what I want. God said, I am not amused. If you want to get the fullness of who God is, you got to give him the fullness of who you are. You got to change your priorities. There, there, I was looking at this thing and uh, trying to, find the right words to articulate what it is that God was saying to me because motivation is, is the key to how we uh, uh, deal with God. Mm -hmm. and, and in reality, it's how we deal with life. 
And I pray you see yourself somewhere in here, and it doesn't take too long because I would pray that you get an aha moment soon. Mm -hmm. So in its simplistic form, it's, a, it's apparent that people do things such as go to work in order to get rewards and the rewards they want. At times, even to get positive reinforcement or avoid punishment and various negative consequences. In other words, we, we do things that are self-centered. Our motivation is self-centered. Ironically, what's termed negative reinforcement actually refers to the removal of undesirable circumstances. Things we don't want to deal with, we want them gone. So hear what I'm telling you, the word of God. You see this? It's, it says, this is my, my commitment to my father. I, I'm sick and tired of saying stuff that I don't do. So this is my conviction. The Bible says you put your hand to the plow and take it away. You ain't worthy. The Bible says don't be a hear but do a do, be a doer also. So, so it's important, church, that we understand this and embrace this thing fully that uh, uh, God is, is looking for your response, not out of your circumstance, but because of who he is. So he's saying today, we have to check what motivates us in the body of Christ. You know? Why do you have relationship with them? You afraid something's going to happen to you? You trying to get something from him? Well, do you have relationship because he first loved you? Y'all getting real quiet on me. <laughs> you know it don't bother me, right? Mm -hmm. See, it's operational conditioning. We do whatever we have to do to get some kind of satisfaction out of whatever it is we're doing. So we really don't, but why? Uh, uh, this is a funny thing for me because I wasn't raised in the church. I, I say that because I'm just trying to uh, release some power in you that's there. We are the word of God. Where the, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the Holy Spirit dwells, it stares up. I don't have no whole lot of Bible teaching way back. It's come with my relationship with God and the unctioning of the Holy Spirit. Yet I'm not, look, I'm not bragging, but I'm telling you I didn't even know these words. So it's proof positive to me. It's a learned behavior when ain't nothing on the inside. So you have to learn how to be Christian. But watch this. Whenever something is in argument with God about your circumstance, Romans 8, 28 should jump up. It should bring you comfort. Oh, come on. Y'all ain't hear me for real. If you really love God, you got to love his word. So let me say this again. You got to find a way to get it off of your lips that you're going through. When you look at it as if a struggle, it's always going to be a struggle because you ain't got it. When you begin to look at the pleasure of God picking you, he's saying, watch this. If you, how many folk believe the word? The, the logos, <laughs> the inspired word of God. I'm going to hope you get some rhema from this. All things work together. Watch this, part two. He don't put more on you. <laughs> Man, a shout will be right there. Because whatever you going through right now. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Something about the name Jesus. And, and it's based a lot of times, watch this, on your hierarchy of needs. Because here's the funny thing. We don't, we don't desire much of God until we see some of the little stuff met. See, we need some footing. And then, then we want to worship God. Scared. 
You, you hear Christians start to talk, if it be his will. You, you, know, you know what they're really saying. I, I, I don't want to really take no authority over this because God might not do it. And God, well, you know, we start religiously talking to ourselves. Well, I prove it to you in this Bible that he said, I want you to have everything. I will give you the desires. Oh, my God. Man, it should be another shout right there. <laughs> okay, let me get deep for a minute. The lower needs must be fulfilled before higher ones are activated. Once you start getting blessed, then people start talking about, I'm blessed and highly favored. They change the whole atmosphere. They walk up on you, I'm blessed and highly favored. Because they got some victories in their lap. But they're not worshiping God no more. And God, watch this. He said, count the cost of your words. He said, I'm not going to be mocked. I'm not going to be fooled. I'm going to not only deal with you and your words, but the intention. He said, then there are motivational needs stemming from acquired needs theory. <laughs> I need Cheryl to do something for me. I'm not going to get on her nerves. Oh, I'm the only one married. I'm the only one that's been a child in here. You know, I'm just trying to make it real to you because this is called real life application. When you see it, then you begin to get the aha. So what we do with God is we come to Bible study. We start to come to church early. Praise the Lord. Why? Because we, we had this big day coming up. And we think God is being fooled by that. This is why, listen, let me, let me say this here. Let me plug this for a minute because God really blessed me. I thank God, Pastor Cheryl, she, uh, she, she shared this teaching with me, and, and she convinced me through the Holy Spirit that I was supposed to teach it. And I am really excited about it because uh, knowing the, 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 that it was a journey is one thing, but understanding what God deal with when he went to the cross for us, man, that is a totally different understanding. And you change your, your way of looking at how good God, really, how good God is, man. That he took all this crap for us. And we can't never do nothing for him. Or we got, we, you know, I don't want to get, uh, I'm just on page one. He says, listen, the acquired needs theory, a need for achievement, a need for aff affiliation, a need of power. Cognizant evaluation theory, which is purpose that are actually two motivation systems and types of motivators, internally driven and externally controlled. In other words, you, you're motivated by what you're controlling instead of what's controlling you, which is on the inside, what's driving you. It's more about what you look like outside than what you are like inside. And there's another one that's called the expectancy theory. If you don't expect nothing, I heard her say it, you ain't going to get nothing. And, and, and if you if you expecting the wrong things, you ain't going to get that. Because the Bible talks about you asking a miss. You, look, you, you, can't, you can't stay home, not work, and expect to get your check. I mean, why the folk think that's cool? You got leave, but it's going to run out. Somebody say amen. It's still controlled. Now, ain't it better to have a God that never has an end? <laughs> Who you going to trust? Your 240 hours mandatory carryover? Do you know how long that is? About three weeks. Well, something like that. Six weeks. I ain't got there yet. <laughs> Let me give you some healthy and unhealthy. I'm gonna get, I got to get through this. Uh, here, see, see, here's the thing about this. All this, I got 20 pages. I'm telling you the truth. I get into what God is telling me. I want to understand. If he draw from it, I want him to draw from it. Man, you got to put your time in. Why? Because whether you believe it or not, I have cover over your souls. Because I'm a nice guy and, and all of that good stuff, it don't make me less of who I am. See, I understand who I am. And you got to start understanding who I am. 
See, Jesus had good times with his boys. And it's funny now, if I was a mean old pastor, y'all listen to everything I say. And y'all be just as disgruntled. You know you would. You leave church, man, he just get on my nerves. Because I'm nice? Man, Bishop crazy. Yeah, that's okay. But one thing you got to understand, I am serious. I, I want what God wants for you. I'm not going to switch who I am, but the Bible tells me, Paul said, I would be anything necessary that you might become an understander of this gospel and of this truth. Why? Because it ain't about me. It's about my father. And God got stuff. I don't know what it takes that y'all have not even tapped in. The scriptures say, eyes have not listened. You can't even think about it. He releases it to you as you go on your journey. We waiting for it to manifest while we standing still. That ain't going to happen. You got to start doing all of that stuff in your heart. God got it for you. Why do you think he put it in your heart? Unhealthy reasons. We come to church to punch a spiritual clock. Let me, let me say this here. I get riled up about wrong. I got riled up in the world about wrong. How many old school we got in here? I know we got a couple. I know we got a couple. Your word is your bond. You know what that means? What you say you do. Come on now. So at least when I was in the street and I said, I'm going to get you, I got you. If I say I'm on your side, I was on your side. Now, you may think that's bad. Here he go again. But listen, I brought some stuff into the gospel that God wants. He wants the commitment. He knew me before I was in my mother's womb. He know all about me. Somebody needs to hear me. God is saying, where is your commitment? Now, I ain't called no name. Don't nobody hold their head down, but I'm just saying. You say you love him? Be about it. Don't talk about it. That's James, in case y'all think it ain't scripture. Said we to peace family, to try to make ourselves look better, to be entertained. Healthy reasons to worship him. To worship him. See, something about I said being right and wrong and all that hate and wrong. See, I got a hard time going down there jumping on these people's throat about them getting an Eagle parking spot. And they said, well, y'all never get here until you're late. Somebody say amen. We've had a good time. We've, we've done everything we're supposed to do. You know we have. But the Bible said don't let our good be evil spoken of. Amen. So we, listen, we need to make the commitment that's worthy of our God. Somebody say amen. We get up early for everything else. Everything else, you start getting ready for the movie yesterday, and you know you ain't going to tell Monday. I bet you we got our clothes laid out for Monday. Somebody say amen. Dinner ready, it's thawed. You know, we prepare for everything. But every Sunday morning, we forgot early. <laughs> Trying to keep it real, man. If we the example, if we the remnant, where folk are coming, if that's our claim to glory, we can't be home and they looking for us. I'm gonna leave that there. Selah, yeah. <laughs> Let church say men Selah. <laughs> to grow in our faith, to demonstrate love and loyalty to Christ, to set good examples. Watch this, to combat guilt and the fear of eternal punishment. Man, I come in here, I, I forget that girl, what's her name, Campbell? One sing that song about Sunday morning. Man, that thing be messing with me. I hear that thing on Monday, I go in. Because <laughs> I know Sunday coming. Anybody really love the Lord in here for real? I mean real. You really love the Lord, man. Y'all know he deserved much more. Somebody say amen. Hmm. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 
through 5, verse 6 through 21. Paul is discussing what drives his relationship with the Lord and the church. Paul's relationship is both eternal and external. And it's motivated by faith, not by sight. It's by the faith, not by sight. What is he saying? He's saying that whatever I end up seeing, it's already been motivating me. I don't need to see it for it to motivate me. I get a thought in my mind. I'm like, man, God, put that thing there. I'm motivated. Watch this. Even if it does not come to pass. Because God has control over that. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way that we have to begin to reverence God. Verse 8 says, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. In other words, Paul is saying, I would, man, I look, take me. That's what he's saying. Life is good, but God, take me. How many of us are ready to give it up like that? Got to move quick. The question is, what motivates our faith? Verse 14 and 16, 15 says this. For the love of Christ controls us because we have conclu concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who might live no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Paul says, I am a prisoner in Philion. I think, how did he pronounce it? He said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Being a prisoner, verse 4, he said, I thank God, mentioning you always in my prayer. It builds a relationship. In verse 20 of 2 Corinthians, it says, we are ambassadors for Christ. We're the ones that, that he has planted in the earth that others might come to the realization and understanding that God is God and God all by itself. Listen, you've got to be motivated to say amen to all of the promises of God. In other words, you've got to stand on so be it. I agree. What he said is what he said. Ain't no air in it. Ain't no if in it. Ain't no but in it. And it's not that far from the, your capabilities. You just got to stop. Look, you got to change what motivates you. Because it's not like God of his fear. Here, look, let me give you this. Numbers 23. Say, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He hath said, and shall not he do it? Or hath he spoken and shall not make it good? In other words, when is God never did what he said he's going to do. Show me the proof. I ain't talking about your thinking. I'm talking about when you ask, call on the name of the Lord, was he there with you? Or did he leave and forsake you? Then for you got to remember the foundation of God's promises, folk. Because it translates, hear me, it translating into a bonding declaration that gives the believer the right to expect. You're a child of the king. You ain't adopted. Your name is on the roll as his. If you don't believe it, you're still looking for a solution, you're always going to have problems. But God is saying, I need you to turn the corner. Because there is a scripture, and it says, if they don't receive me, <laughs> there is an end time. Are you hearing me? Watch this. The foundation of God's promises, translated to a binding declaration, and there are three hindrances to it. I pray you're not one of them, and I pray you're not in it, but here they are. One is no expectation. Write it down. Put a note. That's not like God. Whenever you get that, you involved in something, you don't have no expectation. You need to walk in there. Can I use that for a minute, Derek? Derek and I were talking about a job two, three years ago. Derek said, Bishop, I'm going in here. I want this job. I said, look, just ask him one thing, right or wrong. If 
If I'm telling a fib, you tell them I'm telling a fib, not loud. Okay. <laughs> I said, Dirk, you tell them one thing. When they finish, you know how to ask you, you got any questions? I said, Dirk, tell them, when do I start? When do I start? Guess what? That's the first of many times when he used that line. Because he has an expectation. It's something about when God moves on your behalf. Why do we have to keep doing it? Mm -hmm. Something about the name Jesus. When you put his name on it. He said, ask what you want in his name. And you glorify me. And I'll give it to you. What's the problem? Child of God. Limited expectation. You think you've been so bad that God can't forgive you? Well, I don't, I don't want to, you know. <laughs> when I was young, I asked my uncle, I want to go to town. You know, I can work all week. I can give him everything I had, but I was afraid he might not give me nothing if I asked him the wrong question. Say amen. So I had limited expectation. I know I need $30, but I asked for 10 thinking he's going to give me 30 Guess what I got? Five. <laughs> You don't need all that money because I ain't had no power. Oh, man, y'all ain't hearing me. I didn't have no expectation. And he could sense that. Oh, if I give him five, he'd be okay. He ain't going to say nothing. He'd be right up here again with next week working hard because I wanted to get that five. Complaining about it, but ain't doing nothing about it. And then watch this one. Untrustworthy expectation. You asking God, but you ain't believing God. You ain't being trustworthy. That's what's good about these 12 uh, voices. So when I'm plugging that thing, man. <laughs> when you understand this, what these voices are saying, what you really, what are you saying? What are you saying to God with your voice? <laughs> God, you know I love you. Your words say, look, here, don't come with me with that. <laughs> I already know my word. You're the one that got a problem with it. Because you ain't doing none of it. Just telling me what it is. When you want something, you come telling me something. Well, you said in your word, how you know? Show me the verse. You quoting something. You ain't even sure it's scripture. I think it's scripture. But did I hear the song? Okay, I'm, I'm very close, for real. Watch this. Yeah, I am. I really am. I'm on page. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm not going all the way because I can feel the spirit. I really can. Because I just want God for us to get it, man, to stimulate the aha, I got it moment. And you know how you know if you got it? You, you'll see a change. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to be like this. I've been like this since God saved me. I came back to earth like this, flying. <laughs> Whatever I say, he say. Because I'm going to say what he say. <laughs> I ain't going to talk like I used to talk no more. I'm going to talk like he talk. One of the problems, hear me. One of the problems our society has is based on our viewpoint of a father. How we feel about fathers. It makes us hard. It makes it hard for us to understand a father. Now, we can, with our religious selves, take Matthew 7, 17 and not really get the, the graphs of what God is saying. Because watch this. He identifies the fruit on the tree. Amen? He said, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Now, without study, right, without meditation, because now watch what God said. Meditate on this word day and night. Because there's always not a mystery, but there's an underlining truth based on your needs. Mm. You can't go to an orange tree if you have a taste for an apple. But the funny thing about it, you didn't know the taste until you tasted it. You can't judge it from afar off. Oh, oh God, this is going to get to somebody in a moment. So, so what has happened is this. Watch this. 
we have sometimes misinterpreted the tree. Let me help you. A lot of folk may think my father was right. Let me just let it rest there for a minute. Because their opinion of a father, he may not have matched. Amen? But what I believe is my father was one of the greatest men that I had an example, I mean, had the opportunity to meet. And the reason for that is he grew me from a man as a boy. Now, that may not be for everybody. So I had to sit back. And I had to look at the fruit from my father's tree. Not the fruit on my father's tree. Let me help you with that. What he was doing was not evil. It was situational because of the times. And I'm not making excuses. But he had a good heart. He couldn't do no better because what the tree was before him. So when you don't take the time to look at the position, many times you're going to misinterpret the position. You know where I started? I looked at the way my mother looked at my father. If anybody had a right to be mad with him, she did. If she wasn't mad with him, I didn't have a right to be mad with him for her. So I started looking at him for me. And even though he did things that I have never done, his showing me what he did showed me what I ain't going to done. So it fulfilled the purpose for me. Because there are too many goody two-shoe people already. They think we got it because you ain't done this and you ain't done that and you ain't done this, and God saying, I'm waiting for you to do something. But you ain't took no ownership of nothing. I'm, 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 I'm finished. I really am. What was it, 49? Okay, I'm going Baptist for a minute. <clears throat> No, I ain't. All I'm trying to say, church, is this. You're the only one that can change your relationship with God. You, you got to put this one. I, I don't, look, you ain't got to believe me. I, you know, do what you do, right? My job, God, God helped me in the word. He said, you plant or you water. <laughs> It's up to you to get it or to reject it. Somebody say amen. That ain't my job. I don't have that authority. Praise the Lord. If I want to have authority, you better watch what you ask for. My kids grown. Praise the Lord. I'm glad they grown. They're on their own. I'm going to be there to help them, but they already grown. I can't regrow them. Somebody say amen. What a problem they got is probably somebody else's. <laughs> it ain't mine. <laughs> I ain't taking no ownership. <laughs> but hear me. All jokes aside, I'm not getting on you. But I'm telling you the truth. You got to become motivated in things of God. Leaders got to leave. Singers got to sing. The Bible was telling me through study, say you can't sing your way out of Praising God out of being on the disobedient. You can't outdance God. You, you know, you, you shout all you want, but if you ain't doing what you're supposed to, your knees just starting to hurt. That's all. <laughs> your back stiff because you can win in. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Bishop Young. That's my man. He go in for real. My back hurt looking at him. <laughs> but what am I trying to tell you? All that ain't going to make no difference, y'all. Man, he got a pretty shout. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know how we talk in church. We judging somebody's dance with the Lord, you know. <laughs> I beseech you, man. I, I, I beseech you. 
You got stuff you want from God. You, he, he, blessings, many of them were conditional. Unconditional blessings was like, like God told uh, Noah, look, I'm going to destroy this world, but I'm going to keep this covenant with you. So regardless of what people did, I'm, I'm going to do it for generations. That's what he said. It, it's unconditional. You can mess it up, but I'm still going to do it. I'm going to bless you because I just say I'm going to do it. But then there are conditional ones that mean there you play an integral part in the result. He said, seek me first, Matthew, and I'll add. That's conditional. Deuteronomy say, diligently seek me. Don't look to the left or the right and watch what happens. It's so funny. Everybody wants the condition, but they don't want to do the conditional. I guarantee you, and I, I'm, I'm praying to God that I never had to say this again, for real. I, I really do. Because, you know, I get tired. I put the window up. <laughs> I, God working on me with that. Man, we need to be in Bible study. I'm saying it again. Yeah, I'm saying it because guess what? You need to do it. The Bible said it's not me. He said study to show y'all. I know I ain't the greatest teacher in the world, but I'm just doing the best I can. Somebody say amen. Help me teach. We got to find a way. If we love God, if we love God, he say, study to show why we go through so much because we ain't studying. We don't know how to deal with problems. So I always say, man, my kids see me and my wife arguing when we was young. It didn't bother me because at least they ain't going to be pulling no gun out shooting each other when they get married. No, hear what I'm telling you. You need to know how to argue too. Y'all don't want to get that. There we go with the church people again. Well, arguing ain't hurt. Look, the Bible say, argue, get angry, but sin not. Don't mess with me with the word now. <laughs> Amen. You could be like that too. <laughs> Somebody told me once, said, Bishop, you can preach on a dime and give you change. I love the Lord, y'all, because he first loved me. I worship him because he's worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It don't make no difference what goes on in my life. God got my back. And whatever happened, it happened. And I'm okay with that. Because when this earthly vessel, <laughs> y'all ain't hearing me for real. I got me a place up in heaven. Mm. My soul. Loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, my soul loves Jesus, bless his name, my soul. <laughs> Love Jesus, my soul. The song said, "My, my, 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 my soul loves Jesus, 